Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we have a very special episode. We're going to be talking about semiconductor manufacturing and chip packaging equipment and how to invest in those companies in 2024. It's been many decades since the discovery of semiconductor materials and their eventual application in computing and electronic systems, and it's a massively complex manufacturing industry and supply chain that has gradually been developed to support that global demand for chips. Most of you are very familiar with our semiconductor industry flow. Right in the center there, you can see the wafer, fab, and packaging and assembly equipment part of the industry. This is a very critical choke point in the manufacturing supply chain. It doesn't matter what kind of semiconductor or related technology that you want to invest in, the manufacturing equipment makers are a superb place to start. Chips and electronics of all kinds need these equipment providers. Early last year, we compiled a list of wafer, fab, and chip packaging equipment makers. We created an index. This index we put on Airtable, and had a video that we can link here, but we're gonna provide an update today and take a more in-depth look at the processes that these companies enable and why they've become such a powerful part of the semiconductor industry and in turn, a powerful investment. Folks, before we dive into the nitty gritty of the manufacturing processes and the companies that participate in the semiconductor manufacturing space, I'll let you know that we have put together a manual complete with our notes and our slides and the list of all the companies we're going to talk about and pictures and all sorts of extra goodies, you can purchase that over on our Kofi shop. Or if you're a monthly subscriber, you can download that off of our Discord channel as well, included in your monthly membership. Let's talk about why this part of the industry is such a critical choke point. From the flowchart, you can see right there in the middle between the actual manufacturers of chips, as well as the design, and then ultimately to the final assembly of tech equipment and devices, that's where these wafer fab manufacturers and packaging companies sit. Here are five reasons why we say this about these equipment makers. The actual equipment manufacturers are ultimately the ones responsible for bringing engineers' creations to life. Second, these manufacturing equipment makers sit at a central and critical spot in the semiconductor industry flow. Third, semiconductor manufacturing processes are the accumulation of many decades of big science discoveries. These companies combine deep knowledge of chemistry, physics, electronics, and these discoveries compound over time and get patented and continuously improved upon. Fourth, the semiconductor industry overall is still growing very quickly, expected to be a $1 trillion per year industry sometime around year 2030. And five, semiconductor manufacturing is a highly collaborative endeavor. Engineering a single new semiconductor device can cost tens of millions of dollars or more. Setting up a new manufacturing line for a device can also cost just as much or more. A new fab to boost production can cost billions. These equipment makers help enable all of that. We'll start this discussion regarding the chip making process and the companies that provide the equipment for each step with the Fab Five. This is an oligopoly of wafer fab manufacturing and packaging equipment. And we have them ordered from largest to smallest in annual revenue. Number one, of course, ASML holding. Number two, Applied Materials. Three, LAM Research. Number four, Tokyo Electron. And then finally, KLA Corp. These five companies are arguably the world's most important oligopoly. They control roughly 70% of all global wafer fab and chip packaging equipment revenue as of this most recent calendar year, 2023. That puts them in a very incredibly powerful position, controlling not just the advancement of the semiconductor industry at large, but all major industrial advancements, continuous energy efficiency gains, automotive development, industrial automation, as well as the ultimate software and IT services, which is more than $5 trillion per year and still going strong in the global economy. 
This is a chart compiled by Applied Materials using some source material from Tech Insights. We like to share this a lot, but it shows the general dominance of the Fab Five. So the value of each manufacturing process step is roughly illustrated with the bar width, and then each company's general market share if each segment is colored in. ASML's market share of each process step is pictured in purple, applied materials in blue, LAM Research in green, Tokyo Electron or TEL, TDL in yellow, and KLA Core in orange. As you can see from this simple illustration, these companies far and away dominate this industry. Again, like Casey said, 70% of revenue gobbled up each year by the Fab Five. The takeaway for investors is pretty simple. If you're looking to participate in the semiconductor industry for the long term, and especially the industrial manufacturing equipment side of things, the Fab Five are an absolutely superior place to start the journey. ASML is the leader in lithography with a monopoly on extreme ultraviolet or EUV lithography technology. Superior processes and the ability to scan a high number of wafers every hour has made ASML a deeply entrenched specialist in the industry. ASML generated 29.8 billion euro or 32.3 billion US dollars in sales in 2023 and has been generating high levels of return on invested capital or ROIC for many years. This culminated in a spike in ROIC to over 50% last year, a rate that won't continue, but definitely illustrates the efficiency in which the company can invest to support its customers' manufacturing needs. Number two, Applied Materials, the second largest company of the Fab Five as measured by 2023 revenue. This is personally our oldest semi-manufacturing stock holding here at Chipstock Investor. And where we started our journey years ago when we were learning about the manufacturing of semiconductors. Applied has by far the broadest portfolio of manufacturing equipment spanning nearly every process step from raw wafer production all the way to ultimate packaging of the chips. So it touts a highly profitable recurring services segment as well, which you can see show up in the company's financials. Applied's revenue was $26.5 billion in 2023. It's also been generating an average mid-teens percentage return on invested capital for years. And like ASML, ROIC spiked last year as all of that R&D starts to pay off. Given its spot as a generalist versus the specialist that ASML is, Applied has the ability to shift its focus across the massive electronics manufacturing industry to generate growth depending on wherever the economy is leading the latest trends, which is why you see a more flat revenue performance here in recent years. At any rate, this company, along with ASML, an absolute dominant leader in manufacturing equipment. Let's move to number three, LAM Research. Now, historically, LAM Research has been a top provider of manufacturing equipment for the memory chip market, which is, of course, a highly commoditized product that can be swapped out for similar solutions. LAM has been a fantastic bet on memory without playing the wild ups and downs of the memory chip makers themselves. LAM has been steadily expanding its equipment lineup beyond memory and has a growing advanced logic chip equipment portfolio. It's also been the key to many companies' development of advanced packaging techniques like backside power delivery and 3D chip architecture. LAM generated $14.3 billion in sales in 2023 and has similar ROIC rates in the mid-teens percentage. Number four, another generalist, Tokyo Electron, one of Japan's largest companies. Tokyo Electron, or just tell, is a leader in deposition, etch, and cleaning equipment, as well as plenty of packaging capabilities. Japan has been enjoying a resurgence in chip manufacturing the last couple of years, and Tell is a fantastic position to win lots of new business in the coming years as a result. Tokyo Electron has offered a fantastic balance of gradual growth, dividend payments, and the occasional large strategic share buyback plan, similar to what Applied and LAM provide their shareholders. Revenue reached 1.84 trillion Japanese yen, or $13.2 billion in 2023, 
down a bit from the year prior due to a temporary slump, but ROIC of over 20%, even during that temporary pause in sales is really, really fantastic. This company could be sitting on a massive and highly profitable run up the next two to three years. And then the last of the Fab Five, KLA Corp. KLA Corp is a specialist, one that is almost solely focused on metrology and process control, which is a critical part of the entire manufacturing process that in ensures quality. It ensures the yield, which is the number of good dye that you actually get from each wafer. It also works on packaging integrity and much, much more. KLA's growth surged in recent years as development of new manufacturing processes tend to rely heavily on the analytics derived from metrology equipment. KLA Corp's revenue was $9.7 billion in 2023. It's been averaging a return on invested capital over 20% for years, making it a slow but steady investment for investors looking for a bit of growth and dividend income. We're going to talk about a lot of smaller metrology players coming up that may offer higher growth or that possibly KLA can flex its financial firepower and acquire. We'll discuss that more later. That is the Fab Five. Commit those five companies to memory. They're incredibly important businesses and they're fantastic places to start your investment journey. Can't emphasize that enough. But let's now delve into the actual process steps that these companies help enable and all of the companies, not just the Fab Five, but all of the companies that participate in each process step. To help organize that, I put together this very highly technical process flowchart. And fortunately for all of you, Casey took that and made that into a legit looking flowchart that hopefully makes a whole lot more sense. So this outlines the semiconductor manufacturing process from the actual design and raw materials on the left through the process steps there in the middle that oftentimes get repeated dozens and dozens of times over and over again to final test and burn in of the wafers and then the wafers getting diced up and packaged into a chip system. Let's start with the EDA or electronic design automation and photo mask step over there on the left. This is before the actual manufacturing process can begin. So there's actually another oligopoly that closely controls the research and development before the actual chip making process, EDA software. These software and hardware emulation platforms are absolute essentials for all semiconductor designers and electronic system designers as well. And these software providers are tightly integrated with the fabs themselves, the manufacturing plants, since the blueprints are, of course, needed on the manufacturing floor. So the EDA oligopoly comprises Synopsys, Cadence Design Systems, and Siemens EDA, or formerly Mentor Graphics, which was acquired by Siemens in 2017, as well as a few smaller players. We have just two of those listed here, Altium which is a leader in printed circuit board or PCB design software getting acquired by Renaissance and Ansys. Make a merger between them and Synopsys pending right now. Now we highlight these companies because the blueprints, so to speak, for what will eventually become a chip is sent to a photo mask company. A photo mask is a device that contains all the microscopic shapes and patterns that form the transistors of a chip the tiny little on-off electrical switches that form the basis of all computers and electronics. And the single chip is built with dozens of layers of material. And many photo masks containing the patterns for these multiple layers are often needed. The companies that make the equipment to make photo masks and then the companies that make the photo masks themselves, these companies take the EDA designs and then build equipment and use equipment to make these photo masks that eventually get used in the lithography step to print all of these microscopic features. We'll talk about that later. Here are those photo mask companies and photo mask equipment companies. First up, we have Photronics. That's a small company that's solely focused on producing photo masks for manufacturers. And Photronics has been dedicated to making more advanced photo masks to address more complex semiconductor structures. Second, Dynapon Printing, another conglomerate with a small electronics business unit 
Among other items, it makes photo masks and equipment for other precision processes in semis and displays. Number three, Toppen. This is a Japanese conglomerate with an extensive semiconductor and display equipment business unit. Within the semi segment, Toppen provides photo masks for lithography, including EUV photo masks to complement ASML's most advanced machines. Then we have SUS Microtech, small German conglomerate with a diversified offering of coders and developers, metrology and packaging equipment. And the reason we place that here is because it has some of the top photo mask making equipment, as well as a nano imprint lithography mask aligner equipment, which we'll talk about later with Canon. Number five, which is Micronic. It's a small company that's based in Sweden that produces equipment for printed circuit boards or PCBs and other chip packaging. It also is a top producer of mask writing equipment for semis and displays, as well as metrology equipment for masks to ensure quality. And then finally, you'll see IMS Nanofabrication. And this company is a subsidiary of Intel which is a leader in photo mask writing and production equipment. Minority stakes in IMS are owned by Taiwan Semi and Bain Capital. And the last value of IMS nanofabrication was at $4.3 billion in September of 2023. In, besides these six small companies, it's definitely worth pointing out here that Applied Materials is also a leader in providing equipment to make those photo masks. So again, Applied Materials, the big generalist that has a hand in all sorts of process steps, including this one. While other companies are focusing on the EDA and photo mask segment of the industry, other companies are working on producing the actual silicon. These companies are sourcing the silicon-based materials or sand to create silicon ingots. These ingots are created using the CZ method or Zokrowski crystal growth process. Silicon is superheated and melted into a quartz crucible with a small fractional amount of other elements like boron or phosphorus added to alter the final conductivity of the semiconductor. A small silicon rod is then placed on the surface of this molten silicon and rotated and pulled away from the surface. That molten silicon starts to form and harden around this rod as it is pulled, creating those ingots similar to what you see here in the photo. The surface of these ingots is then polished and then cut into silicon wafers, resembling a log of salami getting sliced up. There's a number of companies that produce these silicon wafers. We have Siltronic, Sumco Corporation, Global Wafers, SK Siltron, part of the SK Hynix conglomerate, the SK Group, Soitec, Shinetsu, and AXT. And then when you think about the advent of new power devices from silicon carbide, some integrated device manufacturers like OnSemi, ticker symbol ON, and WolfSpeed, ticker symbol WOLF, have brought raw wafer manufacturing in-house with the development and or acquisition of ingot and wafer production equipment. There are a few companies, though, that we want to focus on that have made a healthy living developing precision tools for this base step of the raw wafer production process. First up, we have Disco Core. This is a precision equipment maker for wafer slicing using blades, lasers, high pressure water, lots of other techniques, advanced substrate material slicing, including things like crystallized glass, silicon ingot, and wafer grinding and polishing. And eventually, when we talk about the packaging process step later on, wafer dicing into chips. Disco has been a superbly managed and well-run business with great returns on investment from their research and development work in an otherwise highly commoditized part of the semiconductor manufacturing process. Second, we have Tokyo Sumitsu Acrotech, similar to Disco, but a smaller market share and less advanced technology and development. This is a small Japanese company with a portfolio of polishers and grinders, wafer dicing, and a bit of metrology equipment as well. And then third, we have PVA Tipla, a small German company specializing in equipment for that CZ method of silicon crystal growth, as well as some quality inspection tools 
of the materials that are produced from that CZ method and some plasma measurement and control equipment used in other parts of the wafer and packaging process. Let's move on to this process that happens multiple times during semiconductor manufacturing, deposition and epitaxy, and we'll also include photoresist in here as well. After combining those efforts from the engineers using the EDA software and the raw wafer manufacturing, it goes to this first major part of the process, deposition. Now, deposition is a broad category that really just refers to depositing thin layers of material on top of the silicon wafer. Depending on the ultimate use case for these devices that are going to be created from the wafers, these deposited layers can be either conductors, insulators or semiconductors to alter and control the ultimate flow of electricity. There are a few basic types of deposition. First, we have chemical vapor deposition or CVD. One of the most common methods that introduces gases into a vacuum chamber that contains the wafer. These gases then react to form a solid film on the wafer surface. CVD has the ability to fill in small gaps and trenches on the wafer. We'll go back to this chart provided by Applied Materials. Near the center of the chart, you see CVD. Applied Materials, LAM Research, and Tokyo Electron hack up and control most of the CVD market. Epitaxy also generally falls under the CVD method. Epitaxy is a more precise process, and that creates the same crystal lattice structure or atomic arrangement of the deposited film as the substrate beneath it. Orienting the film this way is key for high-performance devices like silicon carbide power chips, and applied materials owns much of the taxi market. There are a number of other deposition methods as well. We have physical vapor deposition, as well as ALD or atomic layer deposition. Finally, electro deposition. Again, these markets are highly dominated by companies like Applied Materials, LAM Research, and Tokyo Electron. Additionally, photoresist, which will be for the next lithography step, also needs to be applied to the wafer. This is often done using methods depositing the chemical onto a spinning wafer to create a consistent thin film or spraying a vaporized chemical onto the surface. Of the Fab Five, Tokyo Electron has an extensive lineup of tools for this specific process. There are a number of companies that specialize in deposition besides those three of the big Fab Five. One of the key players in this market is ASM International. So ASML isn't the only Netherlands-based semiconductor manufacturing equipment giant. ASM is a leader specifically in atomic layer deposition, ALD, as well as other advanced deposition types like plasma enhanced CVD and epitaxy. ASM has built up a pretty extensive portfolio of machines needed to make silicon carbide SIC power chips for the EV industry and is a top niche play on the deposition process. The company has a long track record of bringing new R&D efforts to market. Second, we have this Kokusai Electric, which is actually a spinoff from Hitachi. And as of April 2024, 43% of the shares are owned by investment management firm KKR and 15% owned by Applied Materials, which a number of years ago actually tried to acquire this company before getting shut down by regulators. Kusai is focused on thin film deposition, but also has some annealing equipment, which we will address in the cleaning, polishing, and baking section. Third, we have this Wonok IPS, a South Korean business involved in deposition techniques for semiconductors, as well as advanced displays and solar panels. It also offers some etch and packaging equipment. Fourth is Olvac, uh, which has an extensive portfolio of equipment for electronics and displays based in Japan. Various deposition process equipment feature prominently here, as well as etch, clean, and packaging. The company's financials have been highly cyclical though and haven't produced much growth. Number five is Eichstron, a small but fast-growing German specialist in deposition equipment, especially for compound semiconductors, which is silicon 
or some other base substrate mixed with other elements. Silicon carbide is a compound semiconductor, silicon mixed with carbon. And this has made Ixtron a bit of a standout as it helps supply deposition materials for silicon carbide, as well as gallium nitride or GAN for wafer production, especially epitaxy techniques. Number six, Vico Instruments, another small diversified company with a lineup of various deposition machines. Vico also provides annealing and some niche lithography machines and some etch equipment. Number seven, Oxford Instruments, small company based in Oxfordshire, the UK, with plasma technology used in various deposition processes. Amtech Systems, number eight, diversified but small business that makes most of its sales from machines used in deposition by diffusion furnace, as well as some cleaning and polishing machines for silicon carbide. Number nine, Innovac, a niche specialist in thin film deposition, has its roots actually in developing these thin film for hard disk drives, an older mass storage technology slowly being replaced by solid state memory like NAND flash. See our last video on pure storage for an explanation of that market. And finally, number 10, CVD Equipment Core, as its name implies, another niche play, especially in the CVD or chemical vapor deposition method. A company working on machines used in silicon carbide and other next-gen power devices. Let's move on to the lithography step, or also known as photolithography. This is a critical stage in the manufacturing process in which ultraviolet light is used to print the tiny patterns onto the wafer surface. ASML Holding is far and away the leader in this equipment type with deep ultraviolet and most advanced extreme ultraviolet or EUV machines. You can see that in the purple bar there on the very left of this chart from Applied Materials. Lithography is accomplished by beaming the high energy ultraviolet light through the photo mask. The photo mask blocks the beams of light in some places and allows it to shine through in others, creating light carrying the patterns to the surface of the wafer. The pattern light reacts with the chemical photoresist on the wafer surface, making it either soluble, which is positive photoresist, or insoluble, which is negative photoresist. Finally, once the entirety of the wafer has been exposed by the photo masked light, developer solution is sprayed onto the wafer or the wafer is submerged in a developer solution. With positive photoresist, the exposed regions dissolve leaving behind the desired circuit pattern on the wafer. In a negative photoresist situation, the unexposed regions dissolve, revealing the pattern areas on the wafer. The entire lithography process can then be repeated to create more complex and or smaller patterns to create subsequent layers on the wafer. As far as lithography systems that produce light go, besides ASML's dominant share, a couple of Japan's big conglomerates also have some small shares in this critical process. The first one we'll talk about is Canon. This is a big industrial conglomerate with roots in printing and scanning and other optical technology. One of Canon's smaller business units produces lithography equipment, but not the highest performing EUV equipment that ASML provides. Besides DUV and other light source machines, Canon is trying to develop an alternative to EUV called nano imprint technology, which we talked about in a video recently. We'll make sure you have the link for that in the description as well as here on the card. Canon also has a small market share of deposition and etch process equipment, as well as some chip packaging. The second company is Nikon. Another industrial conglomerate with a smaller business unit for semiconductor manufacturing. These products address older lithography light source equipment, as well as some metrology machines. Let's move on to this third process step, etch. This is really one of the final steps in the photolithography process. Etch completes the process of creating those microscopic patterns on the wafer's surface. Etching removes all of the unwanted material left over after the wafer developer has dissolved regions exposed to the ultraviolet light in the lithography step. And once removed, the patterns from the photo mask are left behind, creating 
these little grooves and elevated regions that act as the electrical on off switches. There are two basic types of etch processes. The first is called wet etching. This uses liquid chemicals to dissolve the specific parts of the surface on the wafer exposed in the lithography step. It can be less precise compared to the second method, dry etching, which utilizes a plasma or an ionized superheated gas to bombard the wafer surface and remove material through physical or chemical process. This offers some more control over the etching process and can achieve etching in a vertical direction as well. There are not a lot of new names here in the etch process step. LAM Research, Tokyo Electron, and Applied Materials, in that order, are the dominant leaders in etch equipment. You can once again see that here in this chart showing the market share. They're roughly just right of center, the big wide etch bar. You can see lamb in green, Tokyo Electron in yellow, and applied in blue. But there are some ancillary players in etch that take up the little gray piece left over in that etch bar. There is Hitachi, as well as Vico Instruments, Oxford Instruments, all three of those we've already talked about in the deposition process step. And then we also have ACM Research, which we'll talk more about in the cleaning and baking section and Volvac, as well as a few small privately held companies. Applied Materials has developed pattern shaping. This can reduce the number of lithography exposure steps. You can see a picture here of the Centura Sculpta that Applied Materials released last year. Rather than additional exposures, plasma can be used to further shape the patterns left behind on a wafer surface. It's, an, in essence, a way to expand on etch processing without needing to go back to deposition and lithography processes, yielding big potential cost savings for wafer manufacturers. Okay, let's move on now to the final stage in this mini process here, the cleaning stage. Once patterns from a photo mask have been crafted, the wafer needs to be cleaned. This is an essential part of the semiconductor manufacturing process that ensures a very clean, very pristine surface for subsequent steps in chip creation, or for that final dicing of chips from the wafer and installation onto an electronic device. These wafers need to be cleaned because microscopic particles or contaminants on a wafer can significantly impact the performance and, and reliability of the final chip. Cleaning removes those impurities, including dust, residue, and metallic traces to make sure that electrical conductivity is not impacted. And as I mentioned at the outset, cleaning restarts this whole process of the steps outlined previously, deposition, lithography, and etch, if a device design calls for further layers to be added atop the features that were just built. A clean surface allows for better adherence of those deposited layers and proper functioning of the etched features. In addition to this part of the cleaning process or after certain process steps, wafers are then baked in an oven to repair any microscopic damage that may have occurred. This process is known as annealing, which involves quickly heating a wafer up to a precise temperature, and then that repairs the crystal lattice substrate or other layers built on the wafer surface. Cleaning, polishing, and annealing equipment once again feature heavily LAM Research, Tokyo Electron, and Applied Materials. On this chart here, you can see track clean on the left near ASML, dominated by Tokyo Electron and LAM Research. And then under thermal, you can see Applied Materials plays heavily in this space as well as Tokyo Electron. But there are some smaller companies that participate in this space and are making some headway. That's right. And, and the two big ones here are Screen Holdings, a, a large Japanese equipment generalist that offers a lot of machines for printed circuit boards and uh, as well as the life science industry. But Screen is a leader in cleaning and scrubbing in particular, and also has some machines for photoresist coating and developing, annealing, the, the baking, those thermal ovens on that previous market share chart and metrology. You can see a picture here of what one of those cleaning and scrubbing machines looks like. 
And then the second big one on this list is ACM Research, one of the fastest growing companies in the entire wafer fab equipment part of the industry. ACMR is a leader in wafer cleaning technologies, most of its sales actually going to China to help support their ambitious manufacturing industry. Though the company is working to diversify into the US and Europe with customer engagements with those cleaning and polishing tools. It's also been broadening its equipment into deposition, including electrochemical or ECD plating for advanced chip designs, a particular type of machine that LAM Research specializes in. Casey, as you mentioned, these four steps can be repeated over and over again, dozens and dozens of times. But throughout this process, we have two other key process steps that happen either along the way or can be interspersed at, at particular moments based on what the engineers, what the chip designers dictate. The first of those two is called ion implantation or otherwise known as doping. It's an optional step used for certain semiconductors, think silicon carbide or even gallium nitride in power chips. How doping works is there's a beam of ionized or positively charged superheated gas or plasma fired onto a wafer at a controlled angle to embed the material, to embed those ions at a specific depth in the substrate. You can see a picture of what one of those machines looks like right here. Again, doping can occur at any point in the wafer manufacturing process to alter how the wafer substrate and later on the ultimate chip and device built with it will eventually perform. No surprises here if you've been watching that market share diagram. Applied Materials is the market share leader in ion implant machines, but there are a couple of other important companies in this niche as well. One is Sumitomo, a large Japanese industrial conglomerate that has a small division that develops and sells ion implant machines. And then the big one here that needs called out in particular is Excellus Technologies, a company solely focused on ion implantation and doping. It actually boasts the largest lineup of this equipment, spanning all energy levels to address different process steps, different chip types. In recent years, it's been silicon carbide powered chips used in electric vehicles that have lifted Excellus's fortunes higher. We have a couple of videos on that company linked up here. At all steps along the way in the chip making process, manufacturers need to maintain precise control to ensure that those microscopic features on wafers and eventually chips are aligning with the engineered design. That's where metrology comes in, a fancy word for measuring stuff. Now, metrology equipment can use a variety of methods to ensure process control and diagnostics, or PBC in industry jargon. And that can integrate with analytics software to help manufacture and make improvements to their process. This not only helps increase yield, which is the number of usable good chips or dye per wafer, but it also is a critical part of the development of the manufacturing process for new chip design that hasn't been made yet. We've already talked about KLA Corp being the dominant player in metrology and PDC, but there are a number of other metrology specialists as well. The first you may be familiar with already is Onto Innovation. Onto is the product of a 2019 merger between two smaller companies to form one of the larger and faster growing metrology specialists. After KLA and the other Fab Five metrology lineup, Onto is an emerging leader in this field with advanced optical equipment. Its Firefly G3 machine is in particular selling fast in support of advanced manufacturing and packaging techniques. Onto also has extensive capabilities in software and analytics that work in tandem with its machines. Number two is Nova. This is formerly Nova Measuring Instruments, another small but fast growing metrology player, which is based in Israel. Besides a lineup of optical-based measurement tools, NOFA also has a specialty in inspection or chemistry to ensure that materials are meeting the specifications dictated by the chip design. Number three, we also have Hitachi, which is another Japanese industrial conglomerate. And then number four, Camtech, which is also based in Israel. 
Chemtech has been growing quickly in line with that advanced manufacturing part of the semiconductor industry, and their equipment can be used throughout the chip making process from front end wafer development to back end chip packaging inspection. Number five is Bruker. This is a life sciences company that produces a lot of different types of diagnostic equipment for scientists in biology, chemistry, and molecular and materials research, but it also provides some products for metrology and diagnostic equipment for the semiconductor industry as well. We have Laser Tech, which is another one of Japan's small but fast-growing semi-manufacturing equipment providers. Laser Tech's metrology is useful in wafer and chip inspection, as well as EUV lithography, photo mask, silicon carbide, and battery inspection. And then finally, we have Gigaviz. This one's for wafers with accompanying equipment that can repair any defects found before the wafer development process begins. We have now exited that major portion of the wafer development cycle. We now move on to testing, probing, and burn-in specialists at various stages of the process, but especially when the wafer is complete, testing and burn-in is an important step before final packaging. Various processes are used like probe cards, for example, really just a, a circuit board containing microscopic electrical contacts called probe needles that are used to test the wafer for electrical conductivity. There's also burn-in, which has become an important process step, especially for power chips like silicon carbide and gallium nitride. Due to its crystalline structure, silicon carbide components need to be aged, so to speak, so that there's consistent performance across the device. And burn-in is also important in weeding out bad dye from the wafer so that those things don't get packaged up and then fail in an important component in, let's say, an electric vehicle. So this is achieved through a type of probe card, essentially, with precisely controlled electrical current that's held stable for a period of time and that effectively ages that power device. There are some important and highly differentiated specialists in this testing and burn-in category, but many of the companies that we are briefly going to run through here provide probe cards and other highly commoditized products that many businesses have automated processes for. So we're going to hit the high points very quickly here. Most of those are going to be here in the top 10. First is Keysight Technologies, an emerging leader in various test equipment, especially for radio frequency devices, sensors, and for measuring electrical performance. Keysight has made some acquisitions to bolster its software design products as well, and is one of the larger and more diversified players focused on electronic testing in this list. We also have Teradyne. Besides an extensive robotics unit geared towards automating manufacturing processes. Teradyne's bread and butter has long been automated test equipment, including some burn-in equipment. Teradyne services cater to lots of different industries that use electronic components from aerospace and defense to software companies. Third is the large American conglomerate Agilent Technologies that provides a lot of different lab equipment for lots of different industries. Particle analysis and impurities testing feature among that product lineup. Fourth is Advantest, automated test equipment, as well as some metrology and inspection tools. Five is Technoprobe, an Italian probe card company that's been highly acquisitive as of late, purchasing a small printed circuit board and test business and a small segment from testing giant Teradyne. Six is an interesting one, a form factor, a leader in semi-test and measurement equipment, including lots of probe cards and probe card systems. Additionally, the company also has a small segment dedicated to developing quantum computing refrigerators. Number seven, Kohu, a small niche player offering test and handling solutions, as well as various chip testing equipment and a bit of metrology. Number eight, one that we talk about quite frequently on our show, Air Test Systems, which has emerged as a silicon carbide test and burn in specialist and an increasingly important share in gallium nitride test and burn in as well. Besides power electronics, Air Test Systems also has potential for silicon photonics testing as well. And then rounding out this list, we have Yohowo and Qualito, 
Yokowo, a Japanese company that makes various components and electrical testing products, and Qualito, a small Israeli company providing wafer probe test systems. Number 11 through 20, these are very small companies at this point, many of them with very, very small market shares and undifferentiated portfolios, PDF solutions, predominantly software company with some analytics products in there. For the most part, these 10 companies, very small, not ones that the average investor should be focusing too much on. But nevertheless, we promised we would be listing all of the publicly traded stocks involved in all of these process steps. So here you go, numbers 11 through 20. Up to this point, we've been discussing semiconductor wafer manufacturing, known as front-end production. A ton of money and R&D investment and efforts have been spent on the front-end processes over the decades. However, after test and maybe burn-in, depending on the semi-type and application, it's time for packaging. Chip packaging is known as the back-end process. It involves dicing the wafer into chips, at which point they become a usable component in electronic devices. After dicing, the chip is attached to a circuit board with other chips and components and encased in a protective housing. We've already discussed Disco's work in wafer dicing, which is a critical stage in packaging as the in individual die in wafers, which is each of those little square or rectangle containing the patterns from the photo masks, need to be cut and prepared. Outside of Japan, Disco is a little known and underfollowed company critical to the back end semiconductor packaging process. Now, after those chips are diced up, there are numerous ways that they can be packaged and even more ways being developed as we speak. Taiwan Semiconductor is a leader in developing some of these new manufacturing techniques. But as was the case with wafer manufacturing, fabs like Taiwan Semi still need equipment providers to acquire the process technology to get the actual job done. The Fab Five, of course, all offer some level of packaging equipment with especially Applied Materials, LAM Research, and Tokyo Electron leading the charge forward. There are some very important specialists in this field, though, that could emerge as big industry giants in their own right. We have BE Semiconductor Industries or just Bessie, another big Dutch company. The Netherlands is a hotbed for leading edge manufacturing tech as we've already covered ASML and ASM International. BE Semi is a standout in advanced packaging and a pure play bet on this new frontier of the semiconductor manufacturing process. Companies entering a new phase of growth, perhaps its best growth rates for years lie just ahead as advanced packaging needs are expected to spike in the next five years or so. There's also ASMPT based in Singapore, this company has a diversified lineup of packaging equipment. In addition to various packaging techniques, it also offers packaging for sensors, for advanced displays, for photonics, as well as some factory automation systems and software services. And third, finally, we have Kulik and Sofa Industries, a smaller US-based company focused on packaging. Most of its equipment lineup is geared towards what's called mature chip manufacturing processes, simply just not the most advanced packaging products. However, there is a big wave of mature manufactured chip demand expected in roughly the next five years or so in support of things like electric vehicles and industrial automation. So this small company could still enjoy some healthy growth rates like its packaging peers. There are numerous other companies that are involved in the semi-manufacturing and packaging sub-industry. Some companies provide specialty chemical processes, others have fab services, and those that make specialized gauges and modules that are used in the complex systems needed to make electronics. We'll just run through a few of these key companies from our index. We have Fujifilm Holdings. This is a company from Japan. They do provide various chemicals and materials needed for the photoresist coatings. Developers and other base chemical products used elsewhere in the semiconductor process. Sonotech Corporation, 
which is ultrasonic spray coating systems, nozzles, liquid delivery, and control parts. Teledyne, which has all sorts of products, but offers parts and technology used in inspection, verification. Daifuku, specialist in manufacturing line systems. Ultra Clean Holdings, this is another provider of systems for fabrication buildings. Ultra Pro Clean provides gas and chemical delivery equipment, automated wafer aligners that handle robotics and temperature control. Number six, NIDEC, Japanese conglomerate with a business unit that makes motors, electrical switches, optical components, and Ushio. It's one of our last Japanese industrial conglomerates. They have various equipment and modules, including steppers, aligners, lithography, and light sources. So we have covered a ton of ground in the manufacturing process of semiconductors. There are a plethora of companies to look at. Of course, we have the Fab Five, which we have covered extensively on our channel. But how do you assess wafer manufacturing and packaging equipment companies from the lens of an investor? Yes, there is for sure an easier way for a non-semiconductor technical investor to assess who's making waves in this world of applied sciences. As we briefly mentioned during our briefer on the Fab Five early in the video, here are a few metrics that can help. Revenue, very simply, Measuring revenue growth, especially that sustained over many years, is one of the clearest indicators that a company is building momentum with its manufacturing customers. Lack of revenue growth or below industry average revenue growth may indicate an old or commoditized manufacturing process. Second is operating margin, especially gap operating margin for a larger, more mature business measures how profitable and efficient an equipment maker's own design, assembly, and sales operation is. For an industrial business, a mid-teens to high-teens percentage operating margin is very good. 20% or higher, again, sustained over time, is exceptionally good. Next is free cash flow, which is an adjusted non-gap metric can be a better way to measure the progress of a younger company that may not have scaled to gap profitability yet. But even for the larger, well-established businesses, free cash flow is very important as it represents money that's left over for things like acquisitions, for share buybacks, and for dividend payments. And then finally, return on invested capital or ROIC, which is important for any business, but especially an industrial company and especially these businesses that are so focused on semiconductor manufacturing. Granted, ROIC is a backwards looking metric that measures a management team's effectiveness at deploying capital in the past. So ROC doesn't indicate future performance from the management team's current and more recent investment decisions. And it also doesn't necessarily pinpoint which projects or which assets a company is getting its profitable returns from. That's where getting familiar with the business itself and its competitors comes into play. I think it's pretty clear that we like semiconductor, wafer manufacturing, and chip packaging equipment companies because they are the unsung heroes of modern technology. They provide the specialized tools that are needed to breathe life into the devices we've come to rely on every day and that operate behind the scenes in these massive data centers. These companies are at the forefront of nearly all current innovations and across all sectors of the economy. And especially as the features on those chips get shrunk down and the functionalities required of those chips get more intricate, Equipment companies are going to play a critical role in pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Their advancements, their research and development require their design and manufacturing partners to invest alongside them, making them really this relentless source of potentially high shareholder returns for years to come. We can't emphasize this enough. If you're looking for a place to begin learning about the semiconductor industry, and a place to begin your long-term investment journey, getting familiar with the Fab Five and all of the different process steps of the semiconductor manufacturing industry are a fantastic place to begin.
All right. As with our previous semiconductor industry deep dives, we will have a manual out on our Kofi shop to accompany this video. This manual will have all of our slides as well as some more detailed information about these companies that we talked about. It's a guide for you as an investor to make informed decisions about your portfolio. Check out our link to that industry manual in our description below, or if you're a monthly member of our YouTube channel or over on Kofi, friend of Chipstock Investor, you get that manual included in your monthly membership price, as well as Discord access. So great value there. Make sure you check it out. We will be back again with more investing analysis and we have earnings coming up very soon. So we'll have a full string of videos and updates on some of our favorite companies in the near future. One way that you can just help us out significantly is if you just hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. That helps us keep putting out great content for you and to help in your investment journey. See you all again at Chipstock Investor.